welcome back to the part two of this tutorial okay I'm going to exit out here and the first thing I like to do now is to get hold of the database this very database here okay it's called school system and that is it this is the that's the table I'm going to be using so let's exit out and right here let's copy the database okay and I'm going to paste it right inside my directory here there we go that's the database right inside my project directory so I can then minimize that now the next thing I want to do is to get hold of my connectors so you see right inside this palette here let's type in ADO connect that is a right there okay I'm going to select here so that I can paste it confidently in there so there we go right so now that the HDO is pasted right in here the next thing that I want to do is come to the properties okay the pro inside the properties we need the connection string that is it right there so inside this very connection string we need the address the address of this if you select it you should be able to get hold of the address go to the properties that is the address there or you can just come up here just right click and select copy address text now let's come right in here but make sure your ADO connection is selected so let's come into the connection string click on the three dots in there and here this dialog box that pops up you now want to select build inside the build select Microsoft 16.0 access database engine and click on next now paste the location that you copy paste it right in there but make sure it include the name of the file itself now you see where we have admin get rid of the admin and the blank password uncheck that and below that is the text connection click on the text connection test connection succeeded click on ok so everything is fine and now the next thing we want to do is go straight to the advanced inside the advanced we want to click on read write so that we can write to the database itself and read from it so that is it is checked click on ok now inside this dialog just click on ok all the setting is done one more setting left scroll right down and watch I want to take care of is the login prompt if you don't uncheck the login prompt the system is going to ask you to confirm your to enter the login details so I'm going to uncheck that so that is fine now okay now that we've taken care of that the next thing we want to do is to get hold of the ADO table click in there type in ADO table there we go grab hold of the ODA table you can paste it right here as well and now inside the ADO table you can, ice, you can also use the same address or you can just click on connection you can paste your address here if you want the choice is yours or you can use on connection because we already have ADO connection one so I might as well just click on connect and select ADO connection one that is fine now scroll right down you see where we have table name there are two tables there I want to select the one that says school system there and one more connection to go through scroll right up you see where we have active 
make sure it's checked that becomes true now the database is connected and one more thing we also need the data source grab the data source you can just paste it anywhere that's it the data source you see this very data source and I want it or I'm now going to connect it you see where we have data set click on the data set drop this drop that down and select ago connect it to the table that is that done so every other thing is done the only thing that is left now is for me to start connecting the whole database to the components so first of all I'm going to start with the navigator here click on the navigator scroll right down look for the data source there click on the data source and select data source so the navigator is officially connected now let's go back to the tab or page control here let's click on my my D, db grill i'm now going to connect the db grill so let's come in here data source click on that there we go look at it the database is officially connected but we do have a problem the problem we have is we are only seeing just two fields now to take care of that first of all I'm just gonna minimize this for now we'll come back to that right click on your DB grill and let's select column editor with the column editor selected you see here click on select all add all fields there all of my field is officially added so now I'm gonna come in here select the student ID scroll right down with the student ID you can see the the width is 64 select the first name the first name is 1534 let's change that to 70 so name repeat the same thing i'm going to make that about 70. address i'm going to make that about 120. postcode we can make that maybe 50 and so on guys so let's take care of that and i'll get back to you guys shortly and there we go guys all of the connections are now taken care of and i've also adjust the column for each of the data that is it that's how it's looking right okay now let's go back into our main interface select the school tab we now want to connect each of these okay so make sure it's selected scroll right down and let's come to the data source here and make sure that is connected there to student ID okay you can select it all if you want and just connect it all in one go scroll right down data source there we go look at that okay now the other thing is why you select each individual you come in here you make sure the data source is selected that is the data source okay and the field name you must change the field name the field name in this case is first name and a very good example is supposing I change it to let's say building yeah, look at the building what we all know is first name so let's change that back to first name there we go that is that all done so the same thing will be repeated for all of these other components select it all and change the data source and the field name bring it down data source data, data source one there we go now let's come to the next one here 
select it all change the data source and the field name the field name in this case is building so change the data source there we go and just like that repeat the same thing for the others data source would be data source one there that is fine okay now let's come into the university information here select all of those and change it to data source as well data source one and all of these as well to data source one the fields I've already added those because that would take a long time all right let's come into the grades here select all of the grades sorry the units select all the units I think I can select the grades as well select it all and let's select total ranking and date and there we go guys all done there so if I let's save it first and I'm gonna run it and just see how that looks like there we go that's how it's looking now all of this data they are actually from my database okay since I have two in there you see we can navigate to the other one and there is all working as we want and we can also click on add new data and just add as as many as you want but for now result and exit button are not doing anything let's take care of those then we can start adding some more data into them right that's how it's looking and uh, just for your information the database i'm using is right here this very one here okay let's open it up so that you guys can see it again that is it that's the database i'm using so close that and minimize that all right exit out and let's double click on the exit button we do have a lot of work to do because all of these combo box and so on we need to put in some data into them but for now let's take care of the exit button first double click on the exit there and right in here as you can see the name of the exit button is called btn exit so right in there i'm going to use an if statement so let's say if message that will be message d l i g let's say confirm if you want to exit There, that's my very first argument so put a question mark in there then comma underneath now I'm going to use one of the method in there or oh, this one should be all right so one of the method I'm going to use is going to be empty confirm no confirmation empty confirmation and let's get rid of this empty confirmation comma square bracket m b yes that's one of the argument and m b no that's the second argument close that very square bracket comma now I'm going to enter zero in there which means the argument that that is argument zero that's the one I intend to use comma M B yes and let's close that very bracket now I'm going to say the one I'm settling for is mister yes then let's begin and this is what I want you to do 
application dot terminate there we go that's it let's get rid of this and I think that's it with the exit yep the exit is taken care of I'm gonna save that let's run it and see how that's gonna work there we go and click on the exit no I don't want to exit yes I do want to exit so exit is fine now let's go back to design view I'm gonna select my form because uh, I want it when I click on when I want to run the form I want it to fill up the screen so let's go to align let's make sure the form itself is selected do that again or bring it down let's see I want to make sure I've select the form yeah that's the form so I need a line that is it right there and just select that at top all top something like that run there we go now that is working fine now the next thing that I would like to do now is you see when I select this I want to be able to display all of the all of this data in here and if I select any of those data I want it to populate the information that we have on this text box or oh, BD edit so let's exit out first but first thing first we need to take care of the form load double click on the form load right inside the form load I'm going to first of all take care of the date so let's go back to the form load so first of all let's declare a local variable in here and this local variable I'm going to call it current date and current date is taken in T date and time as the data type there that is fine let's declare another one I'm gonna call that I I that is going to be an integer I'm gonna use that for a for loop good so now let's grab hold of this current date and right underneath begin I want current date to be dates now there and current date we need to assign current date into the text edit well, let's do this first DB edit DB edit date that is the name of my of this very edit so have a, I'll take a good look at it here okay DB Ted DB edit date dot text and that will be column equals we need to convert date to string okay make sure that is converted and um, what are we converting current date close that so that will take care of the date whatever the date is it will automatically change to that if you go let's go back in there you see the date is 18 and today's date is 20 so let's run it and see I should get the correct date in there now there we go look at the current date all right so that is fine close that now the other thing I want to do is I want to be able to populate the male and female here you see this dialog here let's go back up there right there so once the form loads I want this the end user to be able to select either male, female or male so double click on the form and right underneath here I'm going to say DB that is combo box gender dot items 
dot odd and the very first data is going to be female there and the next one will be male copy and paste that is male there we go okay let's also take care of the I'm gonna grab this first I want to take care of the course code when I talk about the course the code the, the courses I mean let me show you guys the courses I'm talking about see male female that's taken care of that's fine here I need to be able to select whatever course now exit out come back into the form load it's called form create here okay I'm not, you are not in visual studio or anything or visual basic c sharp or whatever so that's going to be db combo cause dot text and the very first text that I'm wanting there is going to be select. This is select a course. There. Now, followed by the following copy. I'm going to just paste. I'm going to paste all of those in there. Let's copy again. I think about eight. Yeah, about eight. Copy and just change the details around. Now the next one is going to be BSC Serious Games. The next course that's going to be BSC the computing or oh no computer science and so on. That is it all done. So if I run it now and let's see how that's going to work. Drop this down. You see, when I select any of the courses, I want it to change all of the information we have in here. Okay, before I go any further, I'm going to take care of the this as well. Okay. So I want the parent to be either guidance or whatever. So let's come down here. DB combo parent. And I'm going to grab this add item and the item that I'm adding in there. That is the very first one is going to be, let's say, mom or mother. All right, that's fine. So let's go for dad. And we have that here. Oh, father. Then we have sister. And we have brother. Okay. Then finally, I'm just going to base this one on guiding. There we go. That is that done. And that is for the parents or guardian for whatever. Okay now let's take care of the other so this one is done that's good this is done now and this is done yeah we now need to take care of these these and all of these ones we still have a lot to go through well for now i'm going to call it the end of the second part of this tutorial and i'll see you guys shortly